Hello everybody, my name is Spencer Williams. This is Rome, and in this video I'm going to show you how to play the basic game, the full game, and the very intimidating hardcore mode. Before we get started, I do want to point out that the game you see in this video is a preview copy. That means that the components are not final, and the rules might have a few tweaks here and there between this version and the final version. That being said, let's go ahead and get started. Welcome to Arzium, land of ancient civilizations, bizarre creatures, unexplained wonders, and vibrant characters. A great sleeping sickness has spread across the land, sending every type of creature to wander for hundreds of miles in a dazed, incoherent march. It's your job to seek them out and wake them from their sleep, recruiting them to help you find even more lost souls. Rome can be played anywhere from two to four players, with yellow being the fourth color. I've gone ahead and set up for a three-player game. Each player chooses a color and takes the three starting character cards displaying flags of that color. Players will also take the cubes of the matching color. The deck of tarot-sized cards is made up of cards that have a character on one side and a landscape on the other. That deck is shuffled and placed off to the side. Six of these land cards make up the playing area called the map. Cards are arranged so that the banners on their edges containing the points and the cube arrangement are facing toward the outward edges of the map. Each player chooses a different side of the map and places their character cards along the edge they choose. Choose a starting player any way you like. Might I suggest that the person who could sing the most words of the song Rome by the B-52s gets to go first. That person gets the first player player aid. Everybody else gets a normal player aid. The second and third players both get one coin, and if there's a fourth player, they would get two coins. I do want to point out that the components are limited, so if you need to place cubes or gain coins and there are none left to use, you do not use a substitute. They are no longer available. This is the setup for the basic game. The full game includes artifact tiles and the outpost. There's one outpost card and several artifact tiles. These are a few more ways that you can gain points and special abilities throughout the game. I'll demonstrate how these work in a little bit when we get to that part of a turn. Rome is played over the course of several rounds. As the game progresses, characters will join each player's team. And once one player has 10 characters, that will trigger the end round. You'll finish out the round and the game will be over. Now since they play such an important part in the game, I want to start with character cards and show you how they work. You will use your characters to seek out other characters. To do this, each character helps explore in a different way, as represented by the exploration cube shape on the bottom of the card. On your turn, you will choose one character, flip it over to show that you've used it, and then place your exploration cubes on the map and the arrangement displayed on the card. Cubes determine who gets to add the lost character on the other side of the card to their team. They are also used to gain coins from the map. When you explore a land card more than other players, you find the character lost in that landscape, and it joins your team. Alright, all that makes sense? Well, let's go ahead and add the context of a player's turn so you see exactly how characters fit into your quest. I've set up the game at a point where each player has taken one turn. In this example, the red player wants to maximize the number of coins she can get this turn. So, she flips over Loon Lumutra, and places exploration cubes in the exact arrangement as is shown on the card. When a cube is placed on a square that has coins, the player gets that amount of coins. There are specific placement rules for cubes. Each player is looking at the map from their perspective. So the red player is looking at the map this way, the blue player is looking at the map this way, and the green player is looking at the map this way. You can't rotate the formation of the cubes. They have to be played exactly as displayed on the card. Only one cube is allowed per square, and cubes can cross card boundaries. You can't use a character if the cube formation would result in one or more cubes being placed outside the border of the map. Once you play a card, place cubes, and gain coins, then you'll check to see if all six squares on any single land card are occupied by cubes. Right now, no cards meet those requirements, so let's keep going around the table. The green player wants coins, but also wants to start filling up a land card. He decides to play Vera, and puts green cubes down in this formation. If you want to use a character, but there's a cube in the area you want to claim, you can still play that character. You just skip the cubes that are in the way, like we've done here. The green player gets two coins, and now it's the blue player's turn. 
The blue player wants to hold a majority on this card, so she is going to play Alethi and place her cubes like this. Many characters you find in Arzium contain formations with blank cubes, like you see here. That means you can play the card just for the solid cubes shown, ignoring the blank cubes, or you could pay two coins per blank to fill in the blank. Now it's back to the red player, and Blorgund the Studious is the only unused character left. If she plays the cube formation here and pays two coins to fill in the blank cube, she'd get those two coins back while adding more spaces in her control. Well, let's say instead she chooses just to play the one cube. If the cube on the card is blank, it can go off the edge of the map. Blank cubes do not have to be played within the border of the map. Now that one card is full, you look to see who has the majority of exploration cubes on it. In this example, the blue player has three, the green player has two, and the red player has one. Everybody gets their cubes back. Players who had at least one cube on the card but did not win the card get one coin each. The blue player saves the character and it joins their team. And now, a new card is drawn and replaces the previous card. If there's a tie for control, each player must bid coins starting with the active player and going in clockwise order. Each player may only bid once. The tied player who bids the most coins claims the card. Only the player who wins the bid needs to pay coins. Paid coins are returned to the supply. A player may not bid more coins than they have. If at the beginning of your turn all of your cards have been used, the first thing you do is refresh them by flipping them back over to the character side. However, if at the beginning of your turn you'd like to use characters before it's time to fully refresh, you can flip all of your character cards over by paying one coin per character that is still face up. In this case, there's still one character face up, so the green player would pay one coin and they could refresh all of their characters, freeing up their whole team to go out and find more characters. If you want to play the full game, you'll use artifacts and the outpost. At the end of your turn, you can purchase one of the artifact tiles for the coin cost listed. When you do, take it, put it in your player area, and refill the row. You can have any number of artifacts, but you can only buy one each turn. Artifacts are worth points at the end of the game, and each have some kind of a special ability, as noted by these symbols. To use an artifact, simply flip it over and execute the ability. The artifact can't be used again until you refresh your character cards. At that time, all artifacts are refreshed along with character cards. Here are the four different abilities and their symbols. Gain one coin. Place one blank cube for free. This does not allow you to place a cube without using a character card. When you use this ability, you may flip one of your character cards face up or face down, even at the beginning of your turn. And the last symbol, when you use this ability, you may replace another player's cube with your own, as long as you're using one of your character cards to place the cube. This ability does not allow you to place a cube without using a character card. In this example, if the green player wanted to use Vera to take over the position where blue is, she could use the artifact and place cubes like this. She's only allowed to remove one cube for the ability, so she would still continue placing cubes like normal. In this case, there's a red cube there, so she just doesn't place a green cube. Since she placed it on a space where there's a coin, she would get the coin. If she did have another weapon artifact, she could have also flipped it over and replaced the green cube, getting another coin for herself. Finally, let's look at the outpost. If during the game you can use your cubes to completely surround one cube of one color, you can claim the outpost card. However, only the first person able to accomplish this gets the card. Now, if you think Rome isn't hard enough, you can play Hardcore Mode. In this version, you may not place cubes on the map unless every cube of your shape can be placed. So normally, you can skip cubes like we discussed, but in Hardcore Mode, you wouldn't be able to place in this example. Instead, you'd have to move over and place it here where it would work. If you cannot place any cubes on your turn, you may flip over one of your character cards, but place no cubes. Continue playing until one player has 10 cards. That includes the three that they start with. When a player has 10 cards, go ahead and finish the round so that all players have equal number of turns. 
Then each player counts the points on the cards they own, any artifacts they own, and if they claimed the outpost, add those points as well. The player with the highest number of points wins the game. If there's a tie, the player with the most coins wins the game. If there's still a tie, the players share the victory. And that's how to play Rome. Thanks for watching, and if you have any questions about how to play, feel free to post them in the comment section below the video.